Hey everybody, Eric, Gearhead Daily. Uh, I realized that I've never reviewed this guy, probably the most expensive tool that I have in my shop. Uh, I do have a few expensive tools, but this one by far dwarfs them all. So this is my time saver. This is a 37 inch by 60, so 60 inch belt by 37 wide. Uh, there was, at the time when I purchased this, during the whole uh, COVID thing happening, there weren't a lot of these available, so I had to buy this one brand new, and there were no of the no versions of the 43-inch uh, available, so this was, this was it. This is all that was available, and there was no end in sight. There was no uh, next run of these. This, this was it. So uh, for this particular one, I did pick it up. I did have to buy it new, and used prices at the time were... I mean, within $50 of a brand new one. So I uh, happened to be in Minnesota where Min uh, Time Saver is made. I drove up there and I picked this one up myself. So let's just get the bad news out of the way first. How much did I pay? I paid retail. Uh, thankfully, I did not have to pay any shipping or anything because this thing is 1,500 pounds. The bed alone is 250, okay? This is a very, very heavy machine. It does come with casters that you do have to install. Very easy to do, uh, but and you can wheel this around, but this is very, very heavy. So getting it home was a challenge, and uh, I will show you up here. There are two lifting mount points where if you need to, like I did, thankfully, I had a neighbor who had a uh, skid loader who was able to, with a, with a, you know, a hefty enough one who could pick it up with the two forks. We were able to get it off uh, his trailer, by the way. I used his trailer and uh, uh, I did damage it and I still, still feel really bad about that, but I did. And uh, he was able to pick this thing straight up with some big ropes and barely, barely cleared my 12 foot ceiling and we were able to get the wheels on it and then drop it and then kind of skate it around a little bit so uh, this is my time saver it is a 110 outlet and i think it is the i want to say it's the smaller i think it's the uh seven and a half horsepower version of it so this is your entry level time saver uh retail price of right around fourteen thousand dollars and uh, I love this thing. I absolutely love it. I had a belt sander before. It was one of those open-ended cantilever versions. It, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Uh, it never worked right. The belts always burned out on me. Uh, there just, it just wasn't enough power. I hated this thing. So I decided to, to get this. Now, a couple things before you get one of these, okay? You might be saying to yourself, but Eric, uh, well, you, you know, just get yourself a three-phase one and, you know, they're a heck of a lot cheaper. They are cheaper, but I don't have three phase out in my shop and to get three phase out to my place is, would have been considerable cost that I'm not willing to pay. And a three phase converter, which everybody says, well, just get a three phase converter, Eric, just get a three phase converter. I don't wanna pay between four and $7,000 extra for a three phase converter for a used machine, okay? I got this one, this one's been great. Uh, I've had a couple issues and I'll talk to you about that here in a second. The instruction manual, not super great. It's something I do for a living. Hey guys, reach out to me. I can help you. I can I can help you with that. This is this is what I do. So uh, you will have to wire in a 60 amp service. Okay. So I, uh, with the help of an electrician friend, uh, we decided to put it over here. Okay. Big honk and plug. Went to the uh, local Menards. Uh, picked up. The receptacle and I was able to wire this up and over and into the the uh, the, the uh, fuse block over there so uh, it does have uh, roughly you know, it says six you know between four and six inches capacity but I'm really in that kind of like two to three four maybe for most times uh, this is uh, the safety bar, so if for whatever reason, uh, an over, it's for oversized load, you, you throw something too big in there, uh, it will turn the machine off. This machine is very, very picky about all those little tiny sensors and doing everything in the precise way. There have been a couple times where I just didn't do it in their exact way, had to restart the whole process all over again. Other thing you're going to need to know, this is going to need 60 PSI. This is to keep pressure on the head, and I'll show you 
what that looks like in a second where the belt is housed. Uh, it comes with a pretty hefty conveyor belt and you will need very sufficient uh, dust collection. Okay, this one goes all the way over to that two horsepower Grizzly over there that I, I feel like I stole that from the guy. Maybe I'll review that someday. They don't even make that version anymore, uh, but I got it almost virtually brand new at a very good price. So couldn't, couldn't pass it up. So let's open it up. Let's see what's on the inside. Okay. What you've got on the inside is you've got your belt here. Okay. It is uh, because I do not have the uh, air connected to it yet. By the way, you need 60 PSI. That's constant PSI. You can even use one of those pancake, uh, you know, air gun uh, ones. It works just fine. So uh, as long as it will keep a steady 60 PSI, you should be fine. And this will lower and raise this head up and down. And I'll demonstrate that in just a second. So uh, it's got some sensors on it to keep the belt going this way. And then it's got a couple sensors that keep the belt going this way. So uh, to, to do that, we're gonna, we'll hit this and the whole machine will move up and down. Let me go plug in the air compressor. All right, here we go. Okay, and as soon as you hit that, all sorts of things start happening. So uh, this does come with a regulator, which is pretty nice so that you can uh, dial in the PSI. I do have this a tad high just because, again, it's kind of sensitive. It drops below a certain PSI. It just, it'll just it just shut off, and it really won't tell you the reason why, and that's part of the one of the kind of minor niggles I have with this machine. All the computer you know, electronical business is in here, and it does have a digital readout, but the digital readout doesn't really tell you anything unless something catastrophically goes wrong, and even then it won't even tell you. So uh, I will say the customer service from Time Saver, pretty good. Again, they're in Minnesota, so they were able to help me out with a couple things. Uh, but I have had a couple things not go right. So uh, first thing that didn't go right was there was a sensor in here that, uh, you know, again, keeps this bar, this oversized bar, uh, from tripping. But the problem is, is that it came broken. And I didn't really realize that, and I kept fiddling with it, kept fiddling with it, and then one day it just finally died. Took the whole thing apart, and to get this bar off, you got to take off that side, you got to take off this side, and it's it's probably an hour long procedure just to get to this little tiny sensor in there. Okay, the good news is is a lot of this stuff is off the shelf parts, so the sensor itself was only ten, twelve bucks, but it came broken. I was past the line. I don't know. It, kind of just left a bad taste in my mouth. But uh, the, the way to kind of use this, okay, we're gonna let the power down. Okay, this is your control for your air. So now this way I can pull the belt off if I need to. And you've got a, a stand here. And basically this is cantilevered. If I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go ahead and undo this. Okay, pull this out, there's a little puck probably weighs a good pound and a half it's pretty heavy set that slightly to the side and now this entire thing is cantilevered starting way over here because there's nothing really holding it up but you know you got to get the belt out somehow and i will show you uh how to do that but just a second about the belts uh <laughs> i always forget what size so 37 by 60 that reminds me i always write stuff down but the belts themselves it comes with a couple belts it comes with like an 80 and a 120 and a 150 and that's that's fantastic, uh, but you will run through them rather quickly. Um, they do talk about uh, the easy way to store them is to store them uh, like, you, you know, I just got some PVC uh, that I kind of stuck to the end of the of a board and it kind of just kind of holds them uh, in that kind of roundish shape because these belts will take the shape they're in. You can already kind of see this one drooping a little bit. Uh, the belts themselves are between 60 and $80 a piece. And you know, if you if you treat them right and you don't kind of try and rip through things, you will get some pretty good life out of it. So a couple of things that I will also say is when you are running pieces through this, um, you can rip through this thing pretty good. This thing will go very fast if you if you want it to using the speed control down here. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm feeding a piece through it is I try not to you know get too much through it. Uh, and not to get this load sensor 
you know, anywhere near the 80 to 90 range. I try, or I never ever get it to the 100, but you know, kind of ripping through a piece, it's gonna sit there in the 60 part, and you go a little too deep, it's probably gonna go into the 75. So um, you've kind of you've got your, uh, your your tram here uh, to kind of align everything if you if that's uh, needed, and then you've got a digital gauge that comes with it. This is standard. Uh, and then, you know, you've got your kind of stand, your regular, you know, up down gauge, uh, the, uh, kind of, you know, wheel to make it go up and down. Uh, you know, it, it says, don't try and rip over, you know, an, an eighth, which is way, way too much, way, way too much. I'm, I'm aiming it for a 32nd, maybe tops. Um, so that's about, you know, if I'm going to open it up, that's about, we're going to go this way about there. Maybe a, maybe a smidge more, about half a turn is about a 32nd, between a 32nd and, and a 16th. So uh, again, uh, it, it's, it's kind of touchy. I don't really use the gauge very much. It doesn't really help me very much because wood is, there's no nicer way to say this, wood sucks. Okay, so I don't use the gauge very much unless I am, you know, trying to match up something. I will use my digital calipers, but even then, um, you can run it through two times and it'll still sometimes, uh, you know, it'll still take off material. This is great for flattening like face frames for, uh, you know, for uh, cabinets or running big doors through it. The reason I wanted the 37 as opposed to say like the 32 or the even smaller ones is because I wanted to at some point make full size interior and exterior doors, which are usually 36 inches. So this will let it go through that. Um, when feeding it, it's always nice if you can to kind of throw it at an angle just so you don't get kind of like that full head, like where it just kind of, you know, the whole belt itself grips the piece. Uh, but again, you know, if you're filling up the whole thing, again, go slow and, uh, the, you know, slower the better, but lots to do. Let me show you kind of quickly how, uh, to change this belt. I got to change the belt anyway. I've got a project. I got to run through it here in just a second and I'll show you what that is using a cool Texas flag that I need to that I need to flatten. Keep in mind, this is not a planer. Okay, this doesn't. It, this this is not the goal. of This thing is not to make things flat or parallel. It can if you really push it, but I wouldn't necessarily do that. All right. First thing we do is we remove that little stand. Uh, I've already done that, and then you're going to release the pressure. So if I put the pressure on now, the belt has got full pressure. I'm going to release pressure, I'm going to pull the belt out, there are a couple little places where it can snag, there's a little bolt, two bolts on the bottom that it can snag, there goes the old belt, I'm going to put it, put it away, new belt comes in, some of these are directional, some of them are not. So. Uh, the way this works is it goes this way, okay? It goes, it goes this way. So if it's gonna go, it goes counterclockwise. So if it does have a direction, you need to pay attention. This belt, thankfully, does not. So here we go. Wish me luck on the first try. Try to line up the top part, and then line up the bottom. There's a little white sensor in there have to bypass it's a little tricky and ta-da there we go here is that white sensor that I mentioned it's a little you can hear it click I'm not sure if you can hear that but it's a little limit sensor so if the paper goes a little too far this way uh, it shuts the machine off or it pushes it back this way again the head is designed to move up and down so uh, bearings just to, I just just as a reminder sometimes the bearings are the things that need to be replaced this one doesn't have a lot of hours on it thankfully so uh bearings are still still pretty good so uh just make sure you get the paper past there you got a little sensor uh here i'll watch and i'll show you what happens when you kind of move the paper you can hear it there it moves the head see it's noticing the paper is there so it's trying to push the paper back that way okay that's how you know that it paper is centered. I'm going to go ahead and put my little stand back in Mia. Make sure to line it up with a little hole. 
it's got a sometimes it takes a little bit to get it in there there we go tighten her down if you feel any resistance on this don't otherwise you'll be tapping that hole soon go ahead and release the pressure and you'll see what happens okay belt is good to go you've got good belt tension yeah I see I put my finger in front of the sensor wants to move the head Again, it thinks the paper is too far this way and it wants to push it back that way. This will align itself. Another thing that makes this so, so much better than a drum sander. Okay, so uh, procedure is we do need to hit the stop button. Make sure this is set properly. Okay. And this is where it gets a little, sometimes a little fiddly. All right, so what I've got here is my large, this is a charcuterie board or a cutting board or, uh, you know, display board. It's going to be a Texas flag. Pretty sweet. Uh, but normally what I do uh, is I will kind of put it in there, get it roughly to the height where I want it to go, where it is just barely touching this roller. And then I will send it through at a very, very slow speed, probably the slowest uh, that we have. I'm going to turn this the other way. Uh, but you'll notice it's got a couple rollers here that kind of push and hold it down, and then it'll hit the belt, which is kind of in the middle, and there's another roller on the other side. This thing keeps this very, very flat. So uh, this thing is pretty grippy. Uh, it does need dressing every once in a while, just kind of, you know, what they do is you uh, turn the machine on and then kind of slowly run it up there and just kind of let it ever so slightly kiss your sandpaper. So uh, I'm going to turn this on and you're going to get to see kind of what this looks like. So I'm going to turn it on and then what I do is I crank it down slowly enough to where I can just barely hear this making the paper making contact with the material. Run it through one time, crank it about half a crank, run it through again until I get everything nice and smooth. So uh, this is going to get kind of loud because I'm going to have the compressor and the machine on. So you're not going to hear me jibber jabber anymore. All right, there you have it. Uh, now, normally what I would do is I would pull that out, grab the next roll or next uh, piece of paper there, put it in, and then just kind of work through the grits. But you don't need to see that. Uh, this is 80 grit out of here. And honestly, uh, this feels like 120. And when I put 120, it feels like 150. And I put a 150 in there, honestly, it feels like, two, like a 220 piece of paper. This thing is so incredibly good that it is worth the, the money. It is worth all the hassle. It is worth its little kind of weird idiosyncrasies and, and all the kind of fiddling sometimes you have to do. This thing is worth it. I have this, you know, debated selling it so many times because it has, you know, not a ton of hours. I keep my stuff in good shape. I always, you know, maintenance, yada, yada. It is that good. It really is that good. I mean, look at this. This is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. I did flip it over. You probably didn't see that in my in the video, but absolutely dead on, dead perfect, dead flat, all the way across. I, it, it, it's great. It's a great machine. Uh, there are some things that I really wish they had done better. I don't like the procedure, the startup procedure. Uh, I had to fiddle with the this sensor a little bit and fiddle with the paper and the door to get everything just to solenoids to fire in almost correct order drives me insane but once it does work it is absolutely worth the cost and the weight and the space in the shop and everything it makes my work look so so good 
So it's so much better than having to go through the hand sander. That would have taken me right there, probably would have taken me at least an hour. And that took six minutes, not even, not even six minutes from, from start to finish. So if you have the opportunity, this is 110, okay? I just checked, it is a 50 amp breaker. They do want 50 amps, uh, get 60, <laughs> just, to, just to be on the safe side. Uh, the back in the house, the wife knows when I'm using it because it does dim the lights even back in the house a little bit. So uh, it does suck a lot of power. But again, at the end of the day, if you, have the if you have the shop space and you have the resources, absolutely buy one of these. It makes you look so good. Anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later.